I want to share with you the process I use when folks ask us uh, to make over their slides. Maybe take a look at the slides, take a look at their e-learning course, their PowerPoint slides, and just give some feedback on, on ways to improve it. Not, not may, maybe custom design a custom theme so much as just get everything in visual alignment, make sure everything is consistent uh, from the first slide to the last slide. Follow these five steps, you're going to really much have what you need to ensure that the course is consistent. Now, the first area is the type, then then go move into the background, background images. Third is the graphics. Fourth is the layout of everything. And then five are the colors that, that are used. So let's talk about each of these in a little bit more detail and then jump into a real world example. Now, type styles, obviously the most important thing is just to find that heading one, that title font, that, that intro font, and then the body font. If you do these two, you'll be fine as long as you use them, of course, consistently. I find, I'd say most slides do not even have that defined. And then next I would look at, if you wanted to, uh, define a second heading font, an emphasis font, something to, to call attention to something, captions and labels, a lot of technical training, get a font specific for labels. And then finally looking at things like line height, letter spacing, kerning, and even the indent um, uh, for bullets. But if nothing else, just that heading one, that title one, and then the body font is so important. Background, I like to separate background from the other elements because it's the largest screen element. You can pretty much make or break a design. Um, it's, it, it serves a lot of purposes, right? It can be the backdrop or the location of the scene. It sets that context for everything that you put on top of it. So it doesn't have to dominate your screen or dominate your content. It can play a supporting role, but just really understanding how those background elements work when that content is on top of them. And we'll talk a little bit more about that for layout, but the background, probably just one of those biggest elements that makes or breaks uh, most people's courses. Graphics, right? Probably the largest um, area for a course, the images, the clip art, the arrows, the markers, all of that. And just thinking through how you're using those, how you're selecting them, and are they consistent? One of the biggest areas, just things like rounded rectangles. You start with a rectangle, then maybe you scale it up or over a couple times. And before you know it, you have a totally different type of corner. Well, if that's not intentional, it makes the course, makes the slide look visually sloppy. So just having an understanding of those elements, how they look in the big picture can make all the difference. Layout, right? We talked a little bit about how the background influences those. This is not just for the visual part of your course and how it makes it look good or not. It's really about the fun functional role of how you can understand your content. How easy is it to understand? Now, most courses do use a four by three ratio. So because of that, we can kind of use some pretty consistent common layout models. I always like to uh, use the analogy of a lunch tray, right? You can kind of see a lunch tray. You know what the, the meat of it is, the, the main course, and you have your supporting roles, your supporting course content, your dessert. Well, a lot of courses can fit into little containers. Even if you don't have visible lines for them, everything has a place. Whether you intentionally put them in its place, there is a place for them. So just understanding simple grids, simple guides, and how those work and how to create some margin so the spacing between the elements is consistent. Now, finally, colors. Colors doesn't have to be such a hard thing to work with. If you really want like the easiest way to start working with colors, work with a neutral palette. Just a, a simple color, maybe a dark gray, and then do shades of that element, right? For the different font styles, the different body styles, and then use one emphasis color. So we're actually gonna use two here with the green and the red for the positive, but these are all just shades of this initial gray. So we did use a little heavier color for the top, heading one, a little lighter color for heading two, and then a lighter for the body font. So let's take a quick look and see how all this comes together. This was a, uh, an electrical course that someone had sent us and perfect example of where you kind of need uh, everything hit, right? Everything from the type to the colors. So how did this come together? Well, the first thing we wanted to do was address those types, address the type styles. This was the uh, first slide. So replacing that, right? I did come up with a, uh, a style guide just to define where each of those goes, right? The heading one, heading two, body, and emphasis, and then a lot of labels, right? Because there's a lot of call outs in this example. So if we remove the text and then bring in those textiles and remove this background, as well as then add our own and then our own graphics. So a couple things we did, right? We lightened some of the areas that weren't the focus here. The focus was around where these arrows are pointing, the different um, uh, settings for the multimeter. But what a difference it can make just going through those. We didn't really change much of the layout. Layout's pretty much the same place, but we just went through and hit each of those five main points. Hope that's helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to post it to the forums, but uh, we'd love to help you with your uh, slide designs.